In this video I will show you 20 different gold farms and gold making methods you can use in Dragonflight pre-patch to afford WoW tokens, the new expansion or that mount you always wanted to buy. All of these farms are easy to do, just follow the suggested route and you are good to go. Of course, most of these farms will still be viable after Dragonflight releases, however, they won't be better than current content farming for a while. Let's get into the list. The first farm on the list is Pit of Sauron. It is a Wrath of the Lich King dungeon located in Ice Crown. The route I like doing is on the screen. We are essentially trying to pull as many mobs as we can without killing any bosses, round them up, AoE and loot. We are looking for a single quest giving item, the Battered Hilt. Finishing this quest rewards sought after transmog pieces and that's why the Battered Hilt goes for up to 100,000 gold. Since we are farming a dungeon we have 10 available runs in a 1 hour lockout, sometimes you might not get anything for a few hours, sometimes you get multiple per hour. They tend to sell quite fast. We are looking for Serenite ore in Ice Crown following this route. Before you try doing it, make sure you learn Northrend Mining in Borean Tundra or Howling Fjord. Technically, this is a double gathering route, since there are Ice Thorn and Lich Bloom spawns, however, these are not as expensive as Serenite and sell much slower, so herbalism is not our priority. From mining these nodes, you also get items that can be turned into Eternals, for some extra gold per hour. If you like the farm and you have a lot of ore, I would recommend smelting some of it into bars and sell those as well. For farm number 3 we are located at the Isle of Giants, just north of Pandaria. The route is doing a circle around the island, killing all of the mobs because they drop giant dinosaur bones, which are used to buy a pet and a mount, but they can also be sold on the auction house. Having skinning will greatly increase your gold per hour since exotic leather sells decently fast. The flying dinosaurs can drop an egg, which hatches into one of three mounts, if you are interested in collecting them. When you are done farming, you can decide if you want to sell the materials, or spend the bones to buy the pet and mount, and try to sell those. The second skinning farm located in Pandaria is in Valley of the Four Winds. In this area are packs of goats that respawn really fast so if you have this spot for yourself, you will never run out of mobs to kill. Compared to the Isle of Giants skinning farm, here you will get way more exotic leather, but no other materials unless you also have mining because there are a few ghost iron nodes spawning around. From my experience, exotic leather sells quickly, usually within a few days, and the farm is pretty fun. Staying in Valley of the Four Winds for farm number 5, but this time we are mining Ghost Iron Ore. I would recommend you use this route. Ghost Iron is one of the, if not the best ore to farm if you like mining. One route took me around 7 minutes and I got 88 ore. If you are planning on just selling it, I would recommend also smelting some of it into Ghost Iron Bars, so we are covering both Ghost Iron markets. The most popular item people use Ghost Iron Bars on is Jard's Peculiar Rod which is used for crafting the Sky Golem Engineering Mount. Moving out of Pandaria, we are in Uldum, gathering Whiptail while following this route. Whiptail is one of the most lucrative old world herbs you can farm, and it sells decently fast too. I got 77 herbs in 6 minutes doing one loop of the route. Another huge benefit of this farm is that gathering Whiptail is also the best way to farm volatile life, which is by itself worth it. Speaking of volatile life, other volatiles are a great way to make gold, which is why I picked 3 more volatile farms to showcase. Volatile air is farmed in the Vortex Pinnacle, a cataclysm dungeon located in Uldum. We are running it on normal difficulty. Clear all the mobs up until the second boss, and then jump off the platform to get teleported back to the beginning. 10 runs will take you around 25 minutes. You can get around 350 volatile airs in 10 runs, on top of items which are mostly raw gold. A bonus with this dungeon is that the second boss drops a mount. If you are looking to farm volatile water, I would recommend trying this spot in Twilight Highlands. The main disadvantage is that there are groups of farmers here most days, so as a solo player you might not get as many mobs as you would like. These two spots in Twilight Highlands are both great for farming volatile fire. Unbound Ember Fiends in the north of the zone are pretty straightforward. You just run around the location killing all the mobs. This spot is also quite popular among groups of farmers. In the more southern farm, we are fishing pools of fire and during downtime, while they are respawning, we want to kill enslaved infernos, which also drop volatile fire. 
By the way, if you are enjoying the video and found it informative so far, consider subscribing to the channel and checking it out for more content. After Dragonflight comes out, there will be way more video releases than ever. After 3 Volatiles, we have 3 Primal Farms. Throne of Kil'jaeden in Hellfire Peninsula is the best spot to farm Primal Fire. It is also probably the most contested Primal spot of them all, but these days many people can't be bothered with gold farming. This spot can sustain about 3 people, so if you find it occupied by players, you are better off just leaving. Our Primal Water Farm is located at the Throne of Elements in the Grand. Primarily, we are farming Primal Water from Water Elementals and fishing pools of water, but when both of these are respawning, you should run to the east and kill all the air and fire elementals for air and fire primals. If you want to farm primal air only, try farming air elementals in this area in Shadow Moon Valley. The mobs are quite spread apart and it most likely won't be as profitable as primal fire or water, but it can definitely work as a solid gold farm. At number 13 we have another instanced farm. Queue up for LFR Heart of Fear in Veil of Eternal Blossoms. Follow this route and just as the first boss is about to spawn after killing all the mobs in your path, leave your instanced group. After that you queue up again, up to 10 times per hour. These 10 runs should take you about 20 to 25 minutes. We are farming raw gold and spirits of harmony, which is why this farm is unique and lucrative. Moving back to Kalimdor, we are located in southern Oldham. At this location are crocolisk eggs, which when walked over will spawn crocolisks on you. AoE them, loot them and skin them. The two potions that make this farm worth it are Potion of Treasure Finding, which allows you to loot tiny treasure chests with volatiles, cloth and ore from the crocolisks, and the Darkmoon Firewater, which speeds up your skinning speed by a lot. The Cataclysm mats sell faster and have a higher value than the leather, but even Savage Leather can sell for something. At number 15 we have Shadowlands Callings and Missions. Everyone who played in Shadowlands knows that Callings can make you very decent gold even with a single character, and if you have ults it's even better. You can stack 3 of them and knock them out in under 30 minutes, each of them making you 2000 gold. When it comes to the mission table, prioritize raw gold missions, missions that reward gear which can be vendored for gold, and herbs. If you are feeling lucky, try heading to Ice Crown Citadel 10 or 25 men on normal difficulty. Clear the whole raid, making some raw gold up to the Lich King. The last boss of the raid can on these difficulties drop the Dragoon, a fast selling battle pet that goes for 30 to 40 thousand gold. Next up on this list is an herbalism farm taking place in a dungeon called the Darkheart Thicket in Valshura from the Legion expansion. Since it's Legion, I would recommend leveling your Dreamleaf Gathering skill to 3 stars for maximum profit if you like this farm since it doesn't take too long. We want to enter the dungeon, run all the way to the first boss, skip the roleplay by walking around and then pull all the mobs between the first and second boss of the dungeon. There is around 20 of them. Pull them together kill them, loot them, collect the herbs and get out of the instance. I am doing it on a druid, so I can just dreamwalk or teleport to Moonglade and back, which gets me right outside the instance. One run takes just over two minutes. You can just sell the dreamleaf you get, or you can use it to craft legion inscription glyphs if you don't mind waiting longer for more profit. Next farm on this list is another dungeon the mana tombs. I have made a video showcasing this dungeon in a little more detail, so feel free to check that out using the link in the description. Now I will give you the TLDR version with the most important points. Mana tombs is located in Terrakar forest and we will be running it on heroic difficulty. That is why you need to avoid killing bosses, which is simple, you just walk past them. The one reason we are running it on heroic is to get ethereum prison keys. To get these you need to get consortium reputation to honored, which is simple, you just need to do the mana tombs on normal difficulty a couple of times and complete a single quest in Netherstorm called A Mission of Mercy. Even though this is a transmog farm and we are looking for good TBC transmog and some rare TBC profession recipes, this dungeon provides a steady stream of gold with primals and adamantite ore spawns. Even though this is a transmog farm and we are looking for good TBC transmog and some rare TBC profession recipes, this dungeon provides a steady stream of gold with primals and adamantite ore spawns. That is why I recommend you get mining before you run this dungeon. The route is simple, just follow the corridors and kill everything except the bosses. Number 19 is a quick mining farm. This time we are farming fell iron ore in Hellfire Peninsula. There isn't much else to say, 
I recommend smelting some of the ore into bars so you cover both markets. It won't sell instantly, but it is a good addition to your auction house. Another ore that is a great material to sell is the iron ore, mined in the molten core. Since it's a raid and we want to reset it multiple times, do not kill any bosses. Simply follow this route while mining all the dark iron nodes. If you do the full route, it should take you around 10 minutes depending on your class, so you can't do all 10 available runs in an hour. Dark iron sells fast and you can also smelt some of it into bars. I hope you enjoyed this long list of farms you can do in Dragonflight pre-patch. Good luck on achieving your gold making goals and thank you for watching my video.